All right, unload. Let's take a walk. Wait a minute, you got me all wrong. Honest you have, Red, I, di I didn't squeal. Come on, fellas, give me a break, will you? Let me run for it, just for old times. Oh, listen, fellas, give me the same chance I'd give you. I'm Trent, I wouldn't shoot you. Wait a minute, but you've been in the same spot we're in. We got orders from Big Bill. And if we don't follow, bring us out here. Now get going. Wait a minute, I got a wife and kids. You know what you can do? You can tell Big Bill I got away or something. Ah, uh, shut you? up and quit your blubbering. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. You newspaper guys give me a pain. Certainly I know Big Bill Anderson is back of this. I can't arrest a person just because I think he's a murderer. You fellas can print rumors. I have to print charge. We just picked up Big Bill Anderson and had him look at Trent's dead body, hoping he'd lose his nerve and crack. Nothing doing. We'll have to catch it. That's in the act. That's not so easy, so long as he has others do his killings. Meantime, what'll I do with him? You mean you're still holding him? On what charges? None. I knew that tricky lawyer of his corpus to release him. So I've got him outside. Talk to him. Yes, maybe you've hit on an idea. This town's gonna be a lot better off without you, Anderson. That gag won't work. You can't run me out of town. Not for the lawyer I've got. I can't do much for you in 20 minutes. Craig, take him down to the midnight train and put him aboard. Just so you don't run into that very special legal advisor of his, go out the back way. I'm getting in touch with every chief of police for the next thousand miles to see that you don't get off that train. Come on. I hope you got me a drawing room. Chief Reardon brought Big Bill Anderson to see you. To see me? Well, he was told not to let him get off the train. That's what started the trouble. Big Bill had other ideas. So the chief loaded him into a police car. They're outside now. Sure. That's one way for Reardon to get rid of his own... Load them on my shoulders. I can't chase Anderson out of town. Not until Reardon gets something on him. Oh. All right, send him in. Tell him to bring Anderson in. Hi, Wayne. Hello, Chief. Without an introduction, I'm guessing he's a district attorney. Sit down. Thanks. I will. I've heard a lot about you, Anderson. If any details are missing, I'll be glad to furnish them. We've got enough to hold you. You wouldn't try that. I know a thing or two about law. Specialized on habeas corpus. I know my legal onions. Maybe you overlook some of the small stuff. Ah, an assistant prosecutor. I could jail you as a vagrant. Not employed, no visible means of support. I've had a bank account in this town for some time. And other business interests. People like you don't stay around here very long. Yep, I've noticed your town's dead. No wonder they have to advertise and plead with people to come here. You uh, don't cooperate. We'll cooperate. How? By breaking your own laws? You stretched one when your chief tossed me into that car without a warrant. Kidnapping. Federal offense. Maybe the pro men have to know you're here. I'd like to take a look into your income tax. Paid in full. Certified by the collector. How about locking them up for investigation? I've retained one of your very highly respected lawyers. If you try that. Mr. Horace Mead. You know him? Yeah, but I'm wondering if he knows who you are. From the size of his fee, I imagine he thinks I'm Captain Kidd. Oh, yes. There's another thing. <clears throat> I've always been interested in our Constitution. They must have been thinking of me when they added that Bill of Human Rights. Article 4. The right of people to be secure in their person. 
Article 5. No person should be held for a crime unless on indictment of a grand jury. Article 6. In all criminal prosecution, the accused shall enjoy the right to be informed of the nature and the cause of the accusation, to be confronted with the witnesses against him, and to have counsel for his defense. There you are, gentlemen. That's a bill of human rights. It's never meant to protect human rats. And to think that some of our best citizens use it to hide their skullduggery. Anderson, it won't be healthy for you to operate here. I think I'm going to like your city. Well, if you're through, gentlemen, I'll move on to an important conference. The nice meeting you. All right, Haley. I'll pin something on him. If you can, you'll get a medal pinned on you. When I get the evidence, it's up to you fellas to make it stick. That'll be a pleasure. So long. I want some of the boys to stay close to him. Attorney Wayne is not enforcing the laws. Sir, he cannot or will not. Which? That'll make people think we haven't even tried to get Big Bill. Instead of bawling us out, why don't they print why we fail? Why don't they put the blame where it belongs? Can't expect us to fight crime and the kind of laws we have to work with. Well, it's like hunting tigers with bean shooters. You think criminals made these laws to protect themselves? John, when these laws were made, they fitted the occasion. They draped justice in shining armor and gave it a sharp sword to defend the oppressed and innocent against the abuse of power. Trouble is, times have changed, and criminals have changed. A sword is pretty weak against modern weapons. The Magna Carta was something to shout about in those days when a tyrant could kill a man just because he didn't like the way his hair was parted. But the boys who wrote that code did that the modern criminal would twist it to get a lot of protection for himself. Just remember, the accused is innocent until we prove him guilty. Yeah. Try telling that to the fellow that prints this stuff. Why does he have to pick on a time like this to start blasting just when I'm getting married? If it isn't one thing to stop us, it's a half dozen others. Well, this time we are getting married. Not when a thing like this is going on. I can smell more headlines coming our way. District attorney and assistant in cahoots with racketeers. And in the society column, assistant district attorney to marry daughter of district attorney. <laughs> Not to my daughter. Citizens might start throwing eggs at the wedding. And Collins here, a thousand of those gambling machines. Yeah, and a lot of good those one-armed bandits are doing me. I had to go to work myself so I could pay storage on them. Oil them up. You're back in business. Hmm, those machines will be glad to be back working again. But I hope they don't forget themselves and start dropping the jackpots. How you got them regulated? We keep 70%. Change it. Give the sucker 70% the first week. Let him know you're back in business. We'll take it away from him later. You fellows must remember one thing. It pays to advertise. You think put over every successful business. Advertise ads. But he can't get people talking about us. Let him win. 50. They'll brag it as 100. The next one will say it as 1,000. Everyone that hears about us is a new sucker. They'll be mortgaging their homes for us to make easy money. The same thing goes for the bookies, Hank, and sweepstakes and other rackets. Pick your suckers. Cut in the right people. Yeah, but don't figure on cutting in our noble district attorney. Politician has one weak spot. Load your gun with votes and shoot him through the ballot box. You leave things to me. When I get through with this half-baked hamlet, it'll be a live city. Not familiar to me. I remember her. She's the girl I said goodbye to this morning. She must be my daughter. What a fine day this has been for me. Do you realize I've been waiting at the jeweler's shop for two hours for you to show up? 
And this is the day we were selecting my wedding ring. But darling... Oh, darling. I warned you not to marry a man in public office or you go through the same things your mother did. And if you don't want to face that, now's the time to make up your mind whether you want him. Certainly I want him. Why do the newspapers print trash like that? Why don't they jump on the police for not getting the evidence? Newspapers don't bother with those details. They won't be satisfied till we put Anderson in jail, then they'll take the bows. Well, if the police would get some real evidence instead of those half-baked ones, I wouldn't care who took the bows. Anderson's shrewd. He won't come out in front unless he's it out. But everybody knows Big Bill's behind all the rackets. We've got plenty of evidence, but we can't tie it up to him. The fellow's smart. All it takes is a man just a little smarter. Here's a couple of beauties from the federal men. Just got them from Washington. I told you I'd pin something on Big Bill. Just take a look at those mugs. A couple of daisies. Two of the town's best racketeers. Hank Newell and Joe Armstrong. Hank and Joe are just small fry. Fellow, we're after this Big Bill Anderson. This trail ought to lead us right up to Anderson's door. Pick them up and bring them into my office tonight. Okay. And I'm telling the truth when I spill that all the clip joints and gambling dives run by me on Randall Street are owned by Big Bill Anderson. I turn all the money over to Big Bill. He pays me a split in the profits for being his front and getting arrested when police raid his places. Now sign it. He'll kill me for this. You solemnly swear that all the facts contained in this confession are the truth and were made voluntarily by you without any coercion on the part of the police or district attorney? Yeah. That confession will keep Big Bill from harming anybody. You don't know Anderson. Putting him in jail ain't doing me any good. All he's got to do is pass the word. When a guy like that goes to jail, he's through giving orders. Without a leader, his crowd will fall to pieces. Until we get Anderson indicted, the safest place for him is in jail. Book him as a material witness and lock him up. We'll talk to that other fellow now. Bailey, bring in your other prisoner. Hope we can get the same out of Armstrong. Wait outside, Haley. Sit down, Armstrong. Say, what's that picking me up on the street and rushing me up here? I ain't done nothing. We're going to give you a chance to do something. To come clean. Turn state's evidence against Big Bill Anderson. I'll see you get protection. Protection? Protection never helped a guy when he's full of bullets. Anderson's washed up in this town. He's through. Oh, yeah? It's OK if you want to kid yourself. But I'm not talking. Not like a lawyer. Armstrong, there's a lot of locked doors between you and Horace Meade. He's not coming up here. Get ready to take down Armstrong's confession. Say, you can throw that thing away. I ain't going to sign, see? Get me that record on Armstrong. Joe Armstrong, alias Roger Strong, alias Roger Clayton, alias Bob Clemens, alias Joe Callahan. Pickpocket, thief, confidence man, served time at Joliet, Huntsville, Lansing. Parole from Canyon City after serving five years of a ten-year sentence. Conditions of parole, not to leave the state, not to engage in selling liquor or gambling. And here's a pretty good picture of you. If you want to deny your identity, I'll show you some fingerprints from Washington came in today. I've got a pretty complete record of your life, from the cradle up. Canyon City is just one of several prisons that'll take you back. You violated your parole by hunting those liquor and gambling joints. I only work there. I don't operate them. You'll have to prove that you don't own them, or go back and serve your time. Want to do that, or swear that Big Bill Anderson owns the rackets? OK, I squawk. Big Bill owns all the joints. I only work for him. All right, just tell it to the stenographer.
Take a good look. There's your $20,000 squealers. Bailing out material witnesses comes high. They cost $10,000 a piece of your money. I'll get my money's worth out of them. At the same time, I'll teach the rest of my outfit what happens to guys who shoot off their mouths. I'd like to be there tomorrow morning when that district attorney finds the bodies of his two prize witnesses on his lawn. And that'd be handing him just the chance he's looking for. To charge you murder, double murder. And he could make it stick this time. You're forgetting. These two monkeys sign confessions that tie you in a knot. And those confessions are in the hands of the DA. All right, then you tell me what to do. I've got to prove the DA forced these fellows to sign. You know, third degree, police brutality. Yeah. Look at him. Not a mark on him. And this is as good a place as any. Boys, make it look like the cops did a bang-up job. I wasn't doing a thing. The cops grabbed me and run me up to DA's office. And when I wouldn't sign the paper they handed me, they started slugging me and beating me up. They beat me to death if I didn't sign. They broke three of my ribs. That's all, Mr. Newell. Mr. Armstrong. What's your story? Well, I'd have signed anything, and you would too. The way they beat me up, broke my arm. There's an x-ray and a statement from the doctor. Took turns of slugging me, and all the time the district attorney kept egging them on. Gentlemen, that's what cops do to a respectable citizen who won't help them frame an innocent man. Then you deny the truth of your signed confession against Big Bill Anderson. I signed to keep him from killing me. Mr. Armstrong, you're dismissed from further service before this jury. And you, Mr. Newell. As long as I am foreman of this grand jury, I will not consider any evidence which might have been obtained by such brutality. Gentlemen, I move that no indictment be voted against Ascendant Anderson. <laughs> this makes a monkey out of the district attorney. He won't try to outsmart me, have it framed. I wanted to hang wherever and see it. Give the suckers confidence in me, show them what's running his town. Just one more little job for you can turn in. You know, I promised Hank and Joe if they testified right, they'd never have another thing to worry them. Now you boys see that they don't ever worry again. Have you seen this? Who hasn't? The Star Tribune is after your scalp. I think it also mentions yours. The publisher of the Star Tribune has received an open letter from this modern genius demanding the district attorney and the chief of police resign. And right here, the writer says he has definite proof connecting you with the activities of Big Bill Anderson. If Junius has any real proof of connivance between public office and private crime, the Star Tribune will gladly print it for the betterment of the law-abiding element of this community. Well, who is this Junius? Why don't he sign his own name? Obviously, he's imitating that mysterious English genius who more than a century ago drove a corrupt government from office. Oh, what's that got to do with us? He thinks we're corrupt. Yes? Get it, Dale. All right. Talk of the devil. There's the man that fronts for genius. Better stick around. You can't hide from a newspaper man. Hello, Mike. Hello, Jim. Plain? Sit down, Jim. No, it won't take a minute. Sorry I had to feed you a bitter pill. I swallowed it, but Mike here gagged on it. When you keep on printing that kind of stuff, we'll both be out of office. That's my purpose, right out on your ear. I too can play at that game, you know. But you won't land on your ear, and I ought to sue you for saying I'm tied up with a mess of crooks. If that junior's letter isn't libel, I don't know anything about law. Sure, it's libel. But you can't drum up a jury who won't think you are conniving with Big Bill. I might accept that challenge and haul you into court. Okay. There's only two reasons why he's not in jail. Either you're in cahoots with him, or you're unfit to hold office. Take your choice. Pretty good psychology, Jim. You bet it is. And listen to me, young fella. I run a newspaper to keep this town informed what's going on. Libel laws or no libel laws. 
And if you think Junior's first letter gives a young pup like you the right to sue an old war horse, read Junior's second letter. It came this afternoon. You'll find it on the front page of the night edition. Sorry if I kept you waiting. That's all right. I took advantage of the time to read this latest attack, Junius. Yes, I read it too. I was wondering whether I should wear my new gown tonight. People might say Anderson's graft paid for it. And very nice it is, too. It's a good thing my suit isn't newer. They'd be cracking out with Taylor by Big Bill Anderson. <laughs> We're taking a taxi tonight. I didn't have the courage to drive my new car. I've been months saving for the down payment. You know, these Junius letters may not hurt Big Bill and make a wallflower out of me. Well, that's swell, and I'll have all the dances with you. Oh, seriously, John, maybe we'd better not go. <laughs> I'm not going to let a lot of silly gossip spoil a pleasant evening for us. Sure would like to get my hands on the fellow that's writing all these Junius letters. Haven't you been able to get any idea who it is? No, but who certainly knows what he's writing about. Are you inferring that there's a truth in them about Father? I know we should discuss that this evening. That means you do think it. I'm worried about the whole... Father doesn't seem to want my advice. Well, he did get along pretty well without you before you his assistant. It's my opinion Father knows what he's doing. I suppose he does, but I think he'd get better and quicker results if he were more ruthless. Aha. Uh -huh. I suppose you tried to tell him that. And then he told you something. That's the trouble. He just ignored me. Well, I think Father used very good judgment. And I'll do the same thing before this evening ends up in a quarrel. Hey, it's my lawyer. I've got to see him alone. I'll talk to you later. What's the idea that you must see me tonight, Maid? I've got some important papers for you to sign. They're all ready for your signature. It's for your own protection, so no one else can ever claim ownership. I never sign anything. The boys running the joints know who owns them. They know who to pay the dough to. But if ever you want to turn them into quick cash the way things stand, you couldn't prove ownership. That's the way I want it. Nobody can ever tie me up with these rackets. But unless I put them in your name, I could claim I own them. But you wouldn't try that, Mead. Oh, no, no, of course not. You know I wouldn't try that. No one or anybody else when they're dealing with me. Now run along. Don't come here bothering me. I'll tell you when I want you. But I'm your lawyer. You're paying me to give you advice. That's where you're wrong. I'm paying you to do what I tell you. All right. But I'm warning you. Anything can happen to your business. You've seen those letters in the newspaper, those junior's letters. One of these days, he's going to throw a monkey wrench into your game. Say, where he's tossing his monkey wrench suits me fine. When he says I'm too smart for the district attorney, he's tooting my horn. Find out who this junior's guy is and send him in. <laughs> I'll put him on my payroll. Stop worrying. All right. It's your funeral. All right, boys, you can come in now. Now let's get on to business. I sent for you fellows because this town's ripe. You've worked for me in other towns. You know how I operate. Somebody muscling in on the gambit? No, I've got that under control. But there's some shops here that need protection. I see. How bad do they need it? With me protecting them, they can raise their prices and still make as much profit as they do now. When do we start signing them up? Right away. Collins has a list of the ones we've picked. Maybe you better make an example out of the first few. That'll convince the others they need my protection. We understand. All right, boys. Go to work. Sign this. What is it? It's a membership in the new protective association. Hurry up, you don't have to read it. But I don't want it. I don't need protection. Not that kind. I won't sign it. You'd be surprised to know how high this could blow one of these joints. Put your name on that. How do you like your new price list? Why, well, I'm making a good profit now. 
From now on, you're charging more. And the extra dough goes to us for protecting you. Oh, I heard about you fellas. Well, I don't need your protection and I won't pay it. No. Maybe you better spray those clothes back there in the shop. Now, wait a minute. Let Shut me... up. There's a cop nosing around over there. I'm going to see if he's got his eye on us. Lancy talking. They're the fellows we're after, all right. There's two waiting in the car and two in the shop. Rush the squad to take him in. I'm going to them right now. Trouble. Let's get out of here. hit. Step on it. Mike, they plugged me. The license number is two, ah, three, three, seven, three. That's 14, 16, 18, go to 7th Avenue and Holly Street. A man shot. Fugitives escaped in dark sedan. License plates two or three. All cause be on the lookout for these men. These bandits are desperate and dangerous. They are armed to resist arrest. One man is believed wounded and may seek medical attention. All doctors and hospitals have been warned to be on the lookout. Fugitive car seen turning off 48th Street into National Avenue. That's all. That's our street. I'm going out and follow a police car. Billy. Come back to your lessons. Oh, gee, Mom. Can't I go just a minute? There's been a man shot. You stay here with me. Those police reports make me nervous when I'm here alone. Oh, Mom, there's to be nervous about. I'm here. I wouldn't let anybody hurt you. Come on, this is a perfect hideout. Let's go there. I'd like to see how the cops catch him. You wait till your father comes home and he'll tell you all about it. Mm. There's your father now. He's forgotten his key again. Let him in, Billy. Who are you? What do you want? Shut up. Bring him in. <gasps> Keep quiet and you won't be hurt. Put him over there, Tom. Anybody else in this house? No, but my father's coming home. You better not be here. You get me some water and some iodine and lots of towels. Tom. Hang on to him, just in case. Where is it? Upstairs. Well, come on, let's get it. Sit down. Don't look at me, lady. Keep your eyes on the floor. I know who you fellas are. You killed a man. Keep your mouth shut. Get over there with the old lady and keep quiet. That's all I can do for him. He won't live long anyway. He's just about done for. Lady, looks like you're going to have a funeral in your house. Why don't you men go away and leave us alone? We'd like nothing better, lady. But it just so happens that there's a million cops outside. And if we did leave, you'd start hollering police right away. Attention all cars surrounding the bandit area. The police net is now a complete chain around the National Avenue District. It is certain the fugitives are inside the net. 
All police will leave their cars and begin closing in. Remember, these men are fully armed. Take no chances. That is all. We gotta get out of here, Red. What about Al? Oh, he won't live long anyway. We can't take him with us. Hey, Al. Hmm. He was always one jump ahead of the cops. He must have croaked when he heard those police reports. Attention all police in the bandit area. The bandits are holed up at 1423 National Avenue. They are in the home of William Jones, holding his wife and boy prisoners. Close in on that house. That is all. Get out and start the car. I'll bring the old lady so they won't shoot at us. Come on. Hurry up. the community in a series of raids on merchants were calling a police roundup tonight which resulted in killing two of the bandits as they were desperately trying to escape from the home of William Jones. The third bandit was found dead inside the house where they had held Mrs. Jones and her 12-year-old boy William prisoners. The boy narrowly escaped death while protecting his mother. Read further details in the latest edition of the Star Tribune. You were pretty smart, Collins. They didn't use their heads. Run down and get him a copy of the Star Tribune. Okay. That kills off Red, Tom, and Al. It serves them right if they're dumb enough to get caught. Now I have to line up three more boys to handle their work. It was a mistake holding up in that house. Oh, who cares? You and I didn't do it. I know. But that'll get the public up in arms. And that isn't going to be so. Sure it is. That makes the public criticize the district attorney. The more they jump on him, the sicker he is and the quicker he lead out of my hand. You seen the Star Tribune this afternoon? Uh, certainly raking us over the... They even say we're responsible for this reign of terror. Yes, yeah, Jim Wallace warned me. He said the public temper was so hot I ought to resign. Yeah, well, it wasn't so long ago he was just as anxious to have you run for re-election. Well, when rats won't sail with a ship, good sailors should have sense enough to desert. Not me. Not with you on the bridge giving orders. I'm not quitting. <laughs> I didn't think you would. But we've got to work fast. With Jim Wallace withdrawing his newspaper support, I won't be in office after next election. With you out of office, Anderson and his outfit will milk this town dry. Say, you've given me an idea. If he's going to do it then, why not now? With Big Bill Anderson's support, I might be reelected. You don't mean that. Well, why not? I can't lick him. He's got a staff of crooked lawyers to show him holes in the law for his rats to jump through. If you let me go out in my way, I'll get it. Well, that's just the fire of youthful confidence. You haven't been kicked around much by a lot of ungrateful citizens. Well, you know what's kicking up all the row. It's those genius letters your friend Wallace prints. Yeah. Well, you even said you have secret meetings with him. As a matter of fact, I have an appointment with Big Bill Anderson tonight. That's swell. Get him up here. I'll fill this office with dictographs and make records of every word he says. <laughs> You've been reading cheap detective magazines. You know he won't come here. He won't talk to me anywhere except in his own place. Well, you shouldn't be seen entering Anderson's place. And the public would believe the newspapers. They believe it now. Can't be worse. Besides, I'm anxious to hear his proposition. I have these cigars made special for me. They cost four dollars a piece. If I didn't keep them out of sight, these monkeys of mine would start chewing them. Here, take a handful. Fill up your pockets. No, thanks. They're too rich for my blood. I gave up smoking some time ago. Oh, that's too bad. If you ever take it up again, I'll have a flock of them made up for you. Put your monogram on them, too. How do you like that? Smells like good tobacco. But what else can they put in them to cost four dollars? Nothing. I'd just like to know I'm smoking a four dollar cigar. <laughs> that's like a woman braiding a ten dollar orchid. Yeah, that's right. I never thought about that before. I gotta hurry. They expect me to visit some of my places tonight. So let's cut out the gap and get on to cases, Wayne. Suits me. What's on your mind? Well, you won't be district attorney very long. You can't be reelected. So, what do you want to do about it? What can I do about it? Be silly for you to leave office a poor man. That's something I can't help. Well, maybe you can. What's the use of wasting words? I'll come right out with it. You could be worth $10,000 a month to me for the rest of your term in office. That won't be long. 
Then what about me all the rest of my life? I'll make you chief of my staff of lawyers. What do you say? That's a tempting offer to a poor man. I expect you to accept. So here's your first payment on account. Well, now that we're partners, uh, what have I got to do to earn this? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Just sit tight and don't interfere in anything I do. But what if the police department should uh, present me with evidence which might force my hand? That won't happen. If it does, you call me. I'll arrange a meeting for you with my lawyers. You fellows can figure a way to kill it. Good night, Wayne. Good night. I'll give you a ring every now and then. What's all the excitement about? And where have you been all evening? You'll find out soon enough. Is your father coming? Yes, I called him. He'll be right down. The way you called me, I thought the house was on fire. It's better than that. This will set the town on fire. This afternoon, you accused me of reading too many cheap detective magazines. It did me a lot of good. I've got a record here to prove it. It features our eminent district attorney, Wayne, and tough mug, Big Bill Anderson. You mean you took dictograph records of my visit to Anderson? I sure did. Well, didn't you hear it? No, not yet. Hope it works. Oh, so do I. And, Father, maybe this is the end of your troubles with Anderson and his gang. I don't know how much I got, but here she goes. I gotta hurry. They expect me to visit some of my places tonight. So let's cut out the gap and get on to cases, Wayne. Excuse me. What's on your mind? Well, you won't be district attorney long. You can't be reelected. So, what do you want to do about it? What can I do about it? I me, mean, silly to leave the office a poor man. That's something I can't help. Well, maybe I can. What's the use of wasting words? I'll come right out with it. You could be worth $10,000 a month to me for the rest of your term in office. Mm, that won't be long. Then what about me all the rest of my life? I'll make you chief of my staff of lawyers. What do you say? That's a tempting offer to a poor man. I expect you to accept. So here's your first payment on account. Now that we're partners, uh, what have I got to do to earn this? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Just sit tight and don't interfere in anything I do. I think you'd better shut that off. But what if the police department should present me with evidence? You knew what was on that record. Patricia, I swear I didn't hear it. I'm as surprised as you are. Well, I didn't know your father was taking money. Well, now that you know, what's your next scheme? Oh, I'm not scheming, dear. I wish I hadn't heard it. But now that you have heard it, there's only one thing I can do. Advise you to resign and turn state's evidence. That way we may be able to save you from prison. I see I've taught you too well. Good night, Patricia. Won't you try to see it my way? Try to understand. I mean, there's something I can't pretend not to know. I heard it, you heard it, his own voice. Why, the evidence is right there. Miss Wayne. Patricia Wayne. What a surprise. I'm glad you know who I am. I've known who you are for some time. In fact, I've always wanted to meet you. You may change your mind when you hear the reason for my visit. You name anything you want. It's yours. Will you have a cocktail first? Thank you, no. It's late and I've been waiting for you more than an hour. Hey, if I'd known anybody like you were here, I wouldn't have wasted time where I was. Uh, by the way, how'd you manage to get in here without me? I took advantage of a very good lesson in bribery. So I thought I might try it myself to get into your room. <laughs> That's the one on me. I never thought of it working on my outfit. Uh, won't you sit down? Thank you, I'd rather stand. I want you to take back this money you gave my father. He asked you to do this? No, I got it without him knowing. This would cause an autograph record was made of everything. Yeah? Who did that? Father's assistant, John Carter. Well, then that's no trouble. Isn't he the boy you're gonna marry? Yes, but that wouldn't stop him. You should have seen him after I destroyed the record. 
after you destroyed the record. That's perfect. Then there is no record. You're a smart girl. But you don't know John Carter. I don't have to. Let your father handle him. That's the deal I made. The father refuses to interfere, even if it sends both of you to prison. Is that so? Well, you tell your father it wouldn't be so bad for me in jail. I have a lot of old friends up there. They'd be glad to see me. But when he goes, he'll only meet all his old enemies. All the boys he convicted will be waiting for him. That wouldn't be so good for him. Oh, won't you please listen to me, Mr. Anderson? You have enough money. Why don't you go away and leave this town? And let my father alone. You're tempting... That's a very pretty speech. I didn't make any mistake when I put your old man on my payroll. I should have put you on it, too. I'm in a great spot. Now it's up to you to use that same pretty speech on John Carter. He's the right fellow to hear it. He won't refuse you. Now do we understand each other? Yes, I think we do. Hello. John, I've been trying to reach you everywhere. I can't go to sleep until we settle this. Why must you act in such a hurry? Won't you wait a few days or a week and give Father a chance to do something about it? Oh, please don't do anything now. Darling, I'd give my right arm to delay this. I've been walking the streets for hours, wondering what I could do. I even thought of resigning, but it's too late for that now. The newspaper has it already. This junior's letter tells everything. I'm forced to take action. Listen to this. Proof of a secret meeting between District Attorney Wayne and Big Bill Anderson, notorious underworld boss, was recorded on a dictograph record last night by John Carter. It proves beyond question the district attorney secretly is conniving with a man whom he should prosecute. After obtaining the records, Carter took the proof to the home of the district attorney. Well, that sounds as if I was never out of the fellow's sight. And listen to this. It will be interesting to watch what action the assistant district attorney will take with such damaging proof against his chief. Carter is engaged to marry Wayne's daughter, Patricia. This may influence him to withhold the information improving corruption in the district attorney's office. Patricia! Patricia! Solemn swear, tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. State your name. Patricia Wayne. How does it look? This preliminary hearing will wash it out. The eleven is to a jury. Are you the daughter of the defendant, Dexter Wayne? Yes. Were you present with your father and myself in your home, the night I played a certain dictograph record? I was. Did you recognize your father's voice on that record? I had never heard his voice on a record. But it sounded like his voice, didn't it? Well, I, I don't know. It sounded like two men talking. Did you recognize the other man's voice? Well, it was all so confusing. I couldn't tell. Did you ever have occasion to hear the voice of the defendant Anderson before that night? No. But you have heard it since, haven't you? Yes. Where? Here in this courtroom. Anywhere else? Please answer my question. Where else have you heard Anderson's voice? In his home. When? After you played the record, that same night. Why did you go to his home? I asked him to leave this town. Why? I was afraid he'd cause trouble for my father. What kind of trouble? Well, I don't know, just trouble. There were rumors that Anderson was paying my father not to prosecute him. Prosecute him for what? I don't know. But you knew that your father had been bribed by Anderson. I object, Your Honor, on the ground that it calls for a conclusion by the witness. Objection sustained. What did Anderson say to you the night you visited his home? He felt certain that you would not file charges against my father. Why did he seem so certain? Because at that time, you and I were engaged, and he thought you might be considerate of me. I must ask you to answer some questions about that dictograph record. 
Where did it come from? I don't know. You brought it to my home. Please tell the court what you heard on that record. Well, I can't remember. I guess I was too excited. Perhaps I can refresh your memory. Didn't you hear one man refer to the other as District Attorney Wayne and agree to pay him $10,000 each month? Well, it's also... But didn't you stop that record because you recognized your father's voice and didn't you destroy it for the same reason? I won't answer that. I just couldn't. You have no right to ask me such questions. I insist you do answer. I must warn you, Miss Wayne, you are testifying under oath. You know that means, don't you? Yes, I know. I'm waiting for your answer. Please don't ask me that again. I'm sorry, but I can't answer it. Young woman, your refusal to answer a question from the witness stand constitutes contempt of court. Unless you do answer without further hesitation. Your Honor, I do refuse to answer that question. The bailiff will remove the witness from the courtroom and place her in the custody of the sheriff to be held in the county jail until further orders. If Your Honor, please, I crave the indulgence of the court. I am a lawyer, still licensed to practice in the courts of this state. This is most unusual for a defendant to interrupt the court's proceedings when he's already adequately represented by counsel. Then I am forced to serve notice on my counsel. He is discharged forthwith. Your Honor, you can understand my feelings toward the witness. I beg the court to let me put the question to my daughter. The court has no objections if the prosecution concurs. Proceed. Patricia, you and I have been more than just uh, father and daughter. Ever since we lost your mother, we've been pals. We've always gone to each problems. I've always encouraged you to tell the truth, and you never lied to me about anything. I wouldn't want you to speak an untruth or be evasive, even though you thought it would help me. I know, Father. Now, dear, I want you to answer the question put to you by the acting district attorney. Didn't you stop the record because you recognized your father's voice? And didn't you destroy it for the same reason? Yes. I knew it would be used as evidence against you. When I talked to Anderson in his home, he told me that if Joan sent you to prison, he would be putting you at the mercy of every criminal you had ever convicted and sent there. He said that they would murder you. Thank you, Patricia. Witness excused. That is all, Your Honor. On the testimony of the acting district attorney, John Carter and Patricia Wayne, I order the defendants, William Anderson and Dexter Wayne, held for the fall term of the grand jury. Bail is set at $10,000 for each defendant. Court is now adjourned. Sit tight, don't move away from here. I'll be back and I'll need you. You better put up that bail in a hurry. And don't forget to cover me. You're forgetting I'm no longer your attorney. That was a dumb stunt, forcing your daughter to testify. I thought that was too clever for you. The prosecuting attorney had already put the hooks into us. You didn't want her as a further witness against us, did you? Since when are you telling me how to spend my money? Why waste time? Put up a bond to cover him, too. And before you receive his bail, they might sing another tune. Here are certified checks to cover bail for both defendants. Give me receipts and I'll be running along. Don't be in such a hurry. You may be wasting those checks. You know, this little case today was just the start. You might run out of money before I get through with you. Some of Big Bill's other crimes are nicely illustrated in these warrants. Warrants? Yeah. Here's one that should demand another 10,000 bail. Here's one that's good for at least 20,000. And here's one for murder. Now, when would you gentlemen like to begin matching your bail money against my warrants? I have plenty more coming up. Those things are not worth the paper they're written on. No evidence to support them. Court to throw them out faster they came to trial. Yeah, but they demand bail until they do come to trial. This is just a crazy scheme to try and keep my client in jail. Certainly it is. And it's watertight. This time, Big Bill Anderson goes to jail. Come on. There isn't enough money in the mint to match those warrants. Are you suggesting I go to jail? You'll have to, till I can blast this scheme of his. Is that so? Well, they'll never catch Big Bill where that can happen. Hang on to that bail money. Don't put up any for him, either. I, uh, 
Wish I could change places with you. I wouldn't be as proud of you then as I am now. I've been waiting for just such a thing as this. Go on, tell him he wins the first round. This is a very important letter for John. Give it to him the moment I leave this room. But remember, not until they take me out of here. I don't lose your nerve. Well, where is your jail? Right this way. Let's go. I don't expect forgiveness for something that I had to do. And I want you to know I'll help all I can. John, Father was very anxious I hand you this the minute he left the room. Why you just playing in with Anderson to trap him? Calling all cars. Attention all cars for Big Bill Anderson and former district attorney Wayne who escaped from the police. The prisoners separated in two different automobiles and headed north, making for open country. Patrol all highways. Stop all suspicious cars. Take no chances with these men. They're heavily armed and dangerous. Report to police headquarters. That is all. I didn't expect to be separated from Anderson. Why didn't you keep us together? Say, I'm an expert at this getaway business. Now you stop asking fool questions. But suppose something happened to him. Suppose he doesn't get here. Suppose you stop supposing. Nothing ever goes wrong with things when Big Bill plans them. He'll be here right on the dot. He made it. He's here now. Any trouble, boss? No. Your little pal here was nervous. He's scared stiff he wouldn't make it. Does the pilot have the plane ready? You bet. He's itching to take off. Now, just a moment, Anderson. I thought you and I agreed we'd stay here overnight until the chase died down. It's too dangerous to leave now. We're leaving without you. But what about our plan for me to go abroad with you? That is all right at the time to get you this far. You're too much trouble to carry around. I'm not dragging any anchors with me. I've got something all worked out for you. Wouldn't be good for my health to let you stick around. Give me that bag. These little bombs have been very handy in our business. To help convince people they should see things our way. We won't need them anymore where we're going. I was afraid I'd have to use the last of them this afternoon on the cops. That wouldn't have left any for you. I never did like prosecuting attorneys. They were always getting in my way. But an ex-prosecuting attorney who knows too much it's something I just couldn't stand having around. When you pull the firing pin back, you hold it tight with your finger. Because the moment it's released, it snaps back and explodes in two seconds. Now I'm turning this over to my expert to handle. After we've left. He knows just how to use it without leaving a piece of you big enough for the police to identify. Here you are. Hey, look out, that'll go off. Sure it will. That's what I'm banking on. Any of you take a shot at me, and we'll all be blown up. Isn't that right, Anderson? Now you fellows pile your guns on that table. You. You too, Anderson? I don't have any. Then stand over there with the others. This gives me an airtight case against you, Anderson. You and all your outfit. Now, I suggest when you fellows walk out, you keep your hands up, in plain sight. And you can start now. All right, come on. Get cut, 
I'm out of them. Hurry up, move along. I'll take charge of him. I've been waiting for this for a long time. Come on. Say, you were great. I never guessed it was you. Let go of me or you'll kill us both. What is that thing? It's a live bomb I used on them. I can't let go of it or it'll explode. What'll I do with it? Over here, throw it out this window. Did uh, Chief Reardon get all of them? You bet, every one, thanks to you. We grabbed that lawyer, Meade, too. That's well. This time you have them on conspiracy to commit murder, kidnapping, obstructing justice, and, uh, oh, you add up all the other charges. Uh, How did Patricia take it? I don't know. It's all too fast. You come home with me. I'll try to square things for both of us. 